So I recently showed you in a haul video that I got this new Hourglass palette that was released for holiday. This year I was good and I only got one. I got the lightest one that I thought would suit my skin tone the best, but I'm no stranger to the Hourglass palettes. I have these and I also had the deepest one last year. I did a whole review on them. I'll have it linked up here if you're curious about last year's palettes, but the deepest one I just knew I would never be able to use and that's why I was a little bit smarter about um, getting it this year and just making sure to get one that I knew that I would be able to use. And then I also have these trios. Um, quite a few of them, like some are blush, some are like a powder mixture, some are blush and powder mixture but I really enjoy the Hourglass powders. I think they look flawless on the skin. But today I wanted to do a full face of Hourglass and I wanted to kind of focus on this palette since it is new and I'm gonna try not to pull in any of the others for a full cohesive look just so we can kind of look at this but if we get towards the end and I'm not loving the way that it looks, um, we may dip into some of the other powders. So I first want to start off with the foundation. So I have this foundation. I also have their stick foundation. I think actually though, they have um, a newer foundation that they just came out with that's more sheer. I actually think that would be a better fit for me and what I typically go for for foundation. But this is what I have, so this is what I'm gonna use. And the reason why I'm using this one and not the stick foundation is because I have to mix their foundations with a little bit of blue pigment to get them to work on my skin. Um, all of the tones are a little bit too saturated, either yellow or orange. And again, I am a light olive skin tone, and so I just need it desaturated a bit. So this is the shade five, and this is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. So I'm gonna do two pumps, and then what I mix in with it is a lot of people like to mix in green. I've seen them mix in green. I always like to mix in blue, especially if it's the foundation is leaning orange. That desaturates it. I find that if I were to use, have a pink foundation, then it would be smart for me to mix in the green um, to desaturate that. So a little bit of blue in there. I'm just gonna use my finger and mix that around. And there we have it. All right, so start applying this might be too much foundation I might have gone a little too heavy with it and my skin does look a little bit red right now because I also just filmed the Lancome palette video and I've already done my makeup twice today but I'm hoping that this hourglass makeup I do is a little bit more subtle and good for everyday makeup for me um, because I have things I need to do today and I didn't want to go around with like a sparkly green eye. Yeah, I did get way too much foundation. I think one pump of this foundation, again, because it is a fuller coverage and I tend to not go for, I don't know if they market this as a full coverage foundation, but it, for me, it is leaning towards full coverage. But even though, I'm gonna zoom you in so you can kind of see it on my skin. Even though this does have quite a bit of coverage, I don't think it looks too cakey on the skin. I think it looks pretty nice. Again, I'm just gonna build it up though. I'm, if I have this on my face, and I've already put it out there, I might as well even out my skin tone as much as I can. I do have a little bit of um, perioral dermatitis. I don't know if you can see right here around my mouth if you see that texture. Um, so I'm not gonna say <laughs> much about that or hold it against the foundation if it doesn't look good on those areas. I've had this foundation for about a year and I've only used it like once or twice just because, again, I have to mix it. Which I have to mix most foundations though, so. Very rarely do I find a foundation that I don't have to mix, but I will say that during the summer when I have a little bit more of a tan, I don't have to mix foundations as much and that's really nice, but my, fan is, my tan is fading now. So I'm gonna actually take this 
foundation over the lids too because you can kind of see all of the discoloration around my eyes right now. I do have a concealer though. But honestly, I don't think I'm going to need a lot of the concealer because of the coverage of this foundation. All right, so the concealer I have, I have it in the shade Oat. I feel like I have another shade of this too, but I don't want to dig through my drawer. So I think this is going to be fine. And again, you can see kind of just how yellow this leans. So we'll go ahead and we'll try it first and blend everything out. But I may have to go in and mix it with something else if it looks too crazy around the eyes. I'm also going to like rehydrate my face a little bit with this Clinique um, Moisture Surge face spray. Yeah, it is <laughs> very yellow around my eyes, um, but that's okay. I think once I have all the makeup on, it's going to be less obvious. So after adding in the blue though, this is actually a really good depth and tone for me right now. So I might end up putting this on my everyday makeup bag. But I definitely need to do one pump because look how much foundation I have left over. A little bit goes a long way with this. Okay, I am, I don't know if I'm going to regret it. But I do have a pimple over here, so I am going to add a little bit more of that concealer right there. And then just kind of tap it out. But I think what I've done here is just created a big yellow spot on the side of my face. So I don't have any hourglass products for eyebrows, so I'm going to jump off camera really quickly do my eyebrows and I'll be right back. All right, so I did my eyebrows and then I was feeling my face and it still feels a bit tacky. So I'm gonna go in with this Hourglass Translucent Setting Powder and I'm gonna set everything first. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna give those finishing powders and the blushes and everything just a nice glide on the skin to where they don't catch on any areas. So I'm just gonna take this fluffy brush here And just kind of go all over the face, especially around the cheeks where I'm going to be using a lot of those powders. Okay, that feels a little bit better. I don't want to go too much with this powder, but I do want enough to kind of help everything just move over the face. Now, it, having the skin a little bit sticky would actually help the pigment stick a little bit more but I'm just afraid that it would be a little bit patchy if I left it. Yeah, this feels much better. Okay, so first I wanna sculpt out the face a little bit, and this bronzer, I'm not sure about the tone of it. It almost has like a pink sheen in it. So, is it named, it's the Lunar Bronze. So I'm gonna go in with this brush. And the thing is with these little palettes like this, it is hard. It's a lot harder to get into the powder that way than it would be if you just get a full size bronzer. So sometimes if you're only gonna use a couple shades in these palettes, it might just be smarter to buy two full size so that you can get your brushes into them a little bit easier. They do have a special brush that you can buy from Hourglass that probably, they've probably thought it through and it probably fits way better into these pans, but I didn't want to have to spend extra money on like a special brush. Okay, so I think that looks pretty nice actually. And what I've been doing recently, which I won't do today, but what I've been doing recently is actually mixing all four of these, just getting a brush and swirling it and just sweeping it across the cheeks and calling it a day. But let's swatch these two blushes. So this one's more berry and then this one I would say is more pink. So I'm gonna go into the more berry one on the backs of the cheeks first. I mean, that is really pretty. And then I'm gonna to go to the more pink one here and apply that more towards the front on the apple. I 
I'm gonna go back in with that bronzer brush and then just kind of blend and sweep those shades. So the highlighter, what is it called in here? Metallic strobe powder and opal strobe light. So, and then diffuse light, okay. So we're gonna use that opal shade. I need to find a highlighter brush here, there we go. And we're gonna go and we'll just highlight with the opal shade right here. And then I'm just gonna push that right here on the top of my cheekbone and a little bit right there. And it leans pretty pink for me. I typically don't like it to go too pink, but that's okay. Could also be because I'm putting it over that those pinky blushes. Okay. And then I want to go over, I need to find, I'm going to use the same brush I used for the bronzer and I'm going to go over into the diffuse light, which is my favorite face powder. And I'm just going to move that all over the face and kind of blend everything. And then the last one I haven't used here is a super bright shade. What is she called? Ethereal light. I'm going to dust that under my eyes just to brighten up the under eye area. So I'm going to get a little bit right here and then just dust it right under the eyes and into the inner corner also here a little bit. So I used all of them in there. I actually think this is a really nice base. So I do have some other Hourglass products that I I'm gonna go ahead and use to finish this look today. The first one is a stick eyeshadow. They do have powder eyeshadows, but I, and they had like two varieties, I think ones that you could buy individual pans and then click into a palette, but those were so expensive to do that. And then they also used to have these palettes where all the shades were like in just one big pan together. And that also looked like a mess to me. So I never picked any of those up. Um, I do, I don't know if I still have them. I did have like the, were they called scattered light or something like that? Like the glitter shades. But again, that's something that I never use. Do I still have one though? I might still have one. Hold on. Yeah, I still have one. I used to have more of them, but the only shade I have left is the shade smoke. Yeah, it's the scattered light glitter eyeshadow and I have the shade smoke. Um, I'll swatch it for you, but I don't think I'm going to use it today. Oh, that is really pretty. So here it is, and then swatched out here. Mm. Probably not gonna use it today. I'm going to physical therapy, and I don't want him to think I'm a weirdo when I show up with a glitter eye. The whole purpose of me doing this video is because I knew I could get subtle makeup using Hourglass. All right, let's go in with this. This is the shade um, Voyeur in the eyeshadow stick, and it is just a champagne colored eyeshadow. Now again, this is kind of an expensive eyeshadow stick, I would say. I don't know. It's it probably it costs around the same as like the Bobbi Brown and the Laura Mercier. And honestly, I don't find the formula to be a whole lot different. So if you have similar shades that you like in that, you're not really missing out. Um, this formula isn't that different from those but this is a, like a pretty everyday shade. Okay, and now we're gonna get into a product that I'm so annoyed by. <laughs> so I'll zoom you out a little bit before I zoom you back in. They have this Curator Mascara and it's a tool. So this is the tool, it comes like this and then you have to buy the mascara separate. So all together once you get it, it's like $100 for this mascara. My problem is, is that I have a similar mascara to this that I got from a K-Beauty brand, I will show you. And it doesn't come separate, it comes in, inside just like that. So I have this um, from Neogen. Same kind of tool, everything. I absolutely love the formula. It's a nice wet formula. I can put it on, it holds everything in place, and this mascara does not come off. The problem with the Hourglass, and I don't know, just maybe not enough people were buying this, but the formula is so dry and flaky that 
using this tool, I can't brush it all the way from the root to the tip of the lash. And the formula is dry and it flakes off. So I'm gonna like put it in here, kind of shake it a little bit. Yeah, and it's not, see how it doesn't just coat? So I'm like swirl it around in there. Okay, there we go. And see how thick it kind of looks on here? So I'm gonna curl my lashes and I'm gonna show you the mascara. And I'm, my guess is that not a lot of people bought it and this is just like old back stock that was like sitting and by the time I got it, it was dried out. I can't imagine that they would charge that much for the mascara. But then also, because that lash tool is so expensive and you expect to like be able to use it, it says that it works in like any of their crater mascaras or whatever. I forget what it said. Um, I could only find this one, which was the Realist Mascara. And I had to search everywhere to find it. Um, so that's not promising. Like if you buy a super expensive lash tool to go with their mascaras, you would want them to keep producing mascara. So I've got this coated on here and I'm gonna go in and just start applying it. I will say the best thing about this lash tool is, is if you are a makeup artist, you don't have to keep buying like the disposables because you can sanitize this between each use. As you can see, this doesn't really do a whole lot for the lashes. And because the formula is kind of like dry and flaky, this tool doesn't like comb through that. So I'm gonna do that to kind of, like it doesn't look good. Whereas in the Neogen one that I have, my lashes always look so good when I use that. And I can really build it up when I use the other one, which that mascara I think cost me like $20. So I'm gonna have to comb through this uh, using a lash comb because I can't just, I can't go around with my lashes looking like this. This mascara is so frustrating. All right, let's go in for another coat. And I think I might try to like put some on the top. This could be a mistake. And then push it up this way. I think I'm only gonna do this eye with this mascara. And I'm gonna show you what the Neogen looks like on the other eye. I have places to be today. <laughs> Okay, let me comb through this again. And as I comb through it, it's just like flaking off on my face. And just like chunks are coming out of my lap. Like, that does not look good. Okay. I'll find a brush somewhere and see if I can dust those bits off my face. There we go. All right, let's go in with this, this one from Neogen. Just look how much more wet the formula is. And since the formula is more wet, there's really not anything to comb through. And the, it moves all the way to the tip of the lashes. And then just look how much quicker this built up and the lashes are lifted, they're not clumpy. Yeah, that just looks so much better to me. I'm gonna try <laughs> to fix this side with using the Neogen over top, but I don't know that I can fix it. Okay, so this is as good as I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna get with the mascara. I think I was able to fix it somewhat to where I'm not embarrassed to go out in public today. But then one final step here, and I probably should have done this before the mascara. Let's set it. And I no longer have any hourglass lip products. I didn't really like the ones that I had, so I decluttered them a long time ago. So let's find something that complements this. That's a nice and easy looking, 
I'm gonna go in with this Clarins lip oil. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this palette since it's, this is probably why you're watching the video anyway. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. I think the flush on my cheeks applied this way is nice and natural. Typically what I do because I'm in a hurry when I'm getting ready and I did travel with this last weekend is I just swirled all four of these together and I got like a nice sort of glowy cheek and then I did put a little bit of extra I then put these two together, the opal and this uh, ambient powder, and then made that my highlighter. Um, but I think this is a great little palette, and I'm happy that this is the one that I chose. If you're deeper than me, obviously you're probably going to want, you know, one of the other palettes, but I think this was great. And I do like that last year the lightest palette did not include a bronzer, and I do like that they did include one in this palette, so I really appreciate that. So. Anywho, that's all I really have to say about it. <laughs> I, there's already been probably a dozen or more reviews about this palette out, but I just thought I would show you how I use it with some other Hourglass products on my face. I still can't get over the lashes. I'm like, just keep staring at them. Um, this is extremely frustrating. I'll probably throw out the mascara, but keep the tool just because I feel like I might be able to dip it into other mascaras. Although I'm not sure because since this isn't a brush, I don't know how well it's going to be cleaned off when I go to take it out, if that makes sense. So who knows? Um, it may be a useless tool at this point. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.